Hello everybody, um, it's me, Pokemon D. Kind of. When pursuing greatness, what sacrifices is one willing to make? And once you reach the top, where do you go from there? For Joel Sharon, also known as PokeMD, these questions will take him on a YouTube journey, one with highs and lows that not even he could anticipate. His story is one of growth, success, heartbreak, victory, betrayal, and decline. And regardless of his eventual downfall, his legacy will be one that redefined how an entire community participated with the game of Pokemon. This bittersweet introduction is incredibly drawn out, and while I might claim that this is to create some sort of artistic mood or intricate thesis, I'm really just looking to get more of that sweet, sweet ad revenue. On that note, a word from our sponsor. This episode of Calling People Out in an Overly Pretentious Fashion is sponsored by Ramen Noodles. Ramen comes in varying shapes and sizes, including the college kind, the cup kind, the fancy kind, the discontinued kind, the kind you can get in a restaurant, the super spicy kind, the sink kind, and the bad kind. People of all ages can enjoy ramen, and you don't even have to use chopsticks unless you want to avoid disappointing Naruto-sama. One reason I enjoy using ramen is so that I can access content that is usually locked in my region. If you use promo code TIMID at checkout, they'll include a 12-pack of those little pouches of dried vegetables and grass, or whatever, to make your next bowl of ramen just that much more special. So make sure to check out ramen using the link in the description. Now, back to the video. The Merriam-Webster Dictionary defines a champion as a winner of first prize or first place in competition, or one who shows marked superiority. For Joel Sharon, or Joey, being a champion wasn't always the goal of his. However, when at a young age, he happened to cross the game of Pokemon Red, that all changed. Despite his age, he became engrossed in the world of Pokemon, seeking to master the complex mechanics of the game and learning the deep lore of the world. He even began to compete against other Pokemon trainers at local events in venues such as Toys R Us. So, how did you, Joey Pokeaim, get started in competitive Pokemon? Like, when okay, you so were a kid, we assume you just loved Pokemon and all Yeah, I watched stuff. it, obviously, yeah. yeah. I mean, obviously, yeah. I actually uh, went to my first tournament as a kid in Toys R Us for red, blue, and yellow. No way. Like, literally as a kid, bro. How old were you? Like, five. <laughs> like, <laughs> That's amazing. I, I, like, literally as a kid, it was... As successive games in the franchise were released, Joey would continue to hone his craft until the release of Heart Gold and Soul Silver in 2009, widely considered to be one of the, if not the greatest, games in the entire series. Around the same time, the internet website YouTube.com was beginning to gain popularity among the Pokemon player base as a way to feature replays of in-game Wi-Fi battles. Upon seeing this, Joey quickly realized that he was just as capable as these battlers, if not more so. I originally started because, um, maybe Heart Gold Soul Silver is when I started to. Anyway, back to my story. I originally started because I wanted to share, uh, you know, my battles on uh, YouTube. I have been watching people, MTG Xerxes, um, Xenon, just to name a few, and, uh, it really was like, wow, I love Pokemon. I want to share my Wi-Fi battles on uh, YouTube. And I didn't really think much else of it. I was like, oh, okay, I, I think I could beat these guys. Let me let me just show my videos on uh, and upload them to YouTube. And uh, that was really it. And I just wanted to show my passion for Pokemon. So, Joey created his YouTube channel on May 15th, 2010 under the name of PokeAmD. The MD portion of the name, coming from the clan he was part of at the time, Mass Destruction. The Pokeaim part was an amalgamation of, of course, the word Pokemon, and AIM, or AOL Instant Messenger, of which Joey was a fan. Not long after, he began uploading replays of various Pokemon battles played in-game against other content creators and friends. 
Initially, these replays were uploaded with no commentary, but soon Joey began narrating his battles to explain his plays. Hey guys, Aim here, and today I got a battle versus Cheese. He challenged me to an NU match, and I don't know anything about NU by side to Seth, so I just made this team right before. One interesting point here is that Joey didn't limit himself to one type of Pokemon battle. Pokemon battles in the competitive scene are broken up into a tiering system, where more useful or powerful Pokemon are limited to higher tiers, the highest being the OU or overused tier. Joey proved his ability early on to adapt to a wide variety of tiers, including underused, little cub, and even double battles, where four Pokemon are on the field instead of two. I always felt like the fact that I play so many tiers on my channel to begin with, it gave me an advantage in certain cases, right? Because you are familiar with those tiers. It's not exactly. like we're going into a tournament. It's like, well, we don't really have an RU player. Joey, you want to learn it? So, yeah, and I, yeah. I'll literally, and I'll do it. That's like yeah. the type of thing. Like, I uh, I will literally do it because it's, I actually have a lot of fun, especially this generation. Uh, I know that's like a, it's a question later that we'll kind of get into this, but so I don't want to get too much into it, but. Unfortunately, during this time, Joey would be caught up in a small controversy when it was discovered that he was a filthy, pirate, cheater. Joey posted a video showing off a clearly hacked Caterpie, which he had used to win a battle against a competitor who clearly was unprepared for such underhanded tactics. Alright, what's up guys? You got Pokey Aim here. And um, yeah, I just battled Eric, Kwandao Ren 66 on Wi-Fi, and I used a very special Pokemon, my level 3 Caterpie, caught in a Cherish Ball right next to Arceus in black and white too, you know, that new event that they have. And um, yeah, it has Explosion, and uh, it also has Pure Power, which of course doubles the attack stat. It has 76 HP, 600 attack, unlimited defense, as you can see by that question mark, 300 special attack, 300 special defense, and 600 speed. And basically, Eric did not know what hit him. He should have been prepared. This thing is a major threat in black and white too. And uh, yeah, guys, you definitely will be seeing that battle sometime in the future. This controversy was short-lived, however allegations of piracy would continue to haunt him throughout the rest of his career. Putting that aside, Joey would begin to amass a small following as he proved that he could stand against the fiercest of opponents, from Bean Salad 2 Million to Quack Penguin X. At the same time, he was also competing in tournaments ran by Smogon, a fan-created competitive group that rose to dominate the 6v6 competitive scene. While some in the community were quick to dismiss Joey as a casual due to his YouTube credentials, he quickly dropped the naysayers on their neck and folded them like a chair. You know, back in the day, uh, I remember I played dice on PO, Princess Bree back then. And, uh, and I beat dice after dice said in PO main lobby, well, he's a YouTuber, he's bad at Pokemon. So I beat him down and I made a video about it, right? Uh, and you know, I got comments from Lil Mackie and all that stuff. Uh, uh, <laughs> that's that's so beautifully petty. I mean, too, in fairness, most YouTubers back then were bad. You were it's the true. exception, so. It, it was true, but like, I mean, and that was something like I, I wanted to, you like, like, come on, man, why are you talking crap to me like this? No, like right to his up. face too, that, oh, that's me. Unfortunately, this video seems to have been lost to time, but it was probably epic. Joey truly was on his way to becoming a champion. Joey's channel began to see a large amount of growth around the time of the release of Pokemon X and Y. This growth can largely be attributed to the move by Pokemon from 2D to 3D, resulting in a general increase in interest by the public in the games. At the same time, Joey's friend group was also expanding. He began to collaborate with these friends on his channel, some of these included Thunderblunder777, MV, the Mr. Moet, CTC, Chimpak, and Mr. Jamvad, many of whom had their own YouTube channels as well. One other point that should be addressed is the usage of online battle simulators. In 2014, the Rising Simulator was Pokemon Showdown, which remains to this day the simplest and easiest way to play competitive Pokemon due to its facilitating creating teams and finding opponents. In addition to creating solo content using this simulator, Joey would often collaborate with his friends on Showdown, sharing an account to alternate playing games in a single video. 
the most relevant series to our discussion was known as Hida Fehida, where Joey, Blunder, CTC, and guests would terrorize the latter with base forge sets that were so heat that videos would sometimes require a disclaimer at the beginning. I got a lot of subscribers recently, and if you subscribe to me because uh, you think I am a family friendly channel, you are about you to are be. You are wrong! <laughs> you are wrong, motherfucker! <laughs> okay. <laughs> While this series was very successful, Joey's friendship with Blunder would be tested near the end of 2016, when Blunder would upload a video calling Joey out for his cheating scandals. Alright, let's just get into it. Pokemon cheating is getting completely out of hand. I have to make a video on this. I just have to do it. Unfortunately, only small clips of this video remain, but regardless, they soon patched things up behind closed doors and was soon back to creating content together. By this time, Joey had become the undisputed king of the 6v6 singles competitive Pokemon content on YouTube. He had amassed an impressive collection of Smogon tournament trophies and had over 100,000 subscribers on YouTube. Some might say that, at this point, Joey had achieved his goal of becoming a Pokemon champion, but he was far from satisfied. In early 2018, Joey was playing an underused, or UU, game on Showdown, when one opponent insulted his mother in such a vicious manner that Joey began to strongly resent the UU competitive scene as a whole. In an effort to exact revenge and assert his dominance, Joey launched a counter-offensive to destroy the UU tier. He started by launching a series of videos called Ambipom to the Top, wherein he encouraged his viewers to spam one specific Pokemon, namely Ambipom, on the UU ladder for an entire month. You see, by increasing the usage of this Pokemon, he could effectively force Smogon to include this Pokemon in the UU tier, thus making a mockery of the entire system. Eventually, he was successful, and Ambipom, a Pokemon that everybody agreed had absolutely no redeeming qualities meriting its use in the UU tier, made its way into said tier. Many people were angry as such actions had been taken, but others viewed Joey's actions as heroic, standing up to an organization that prioritized winning over having enjoyment of the game. Some had well thought out reasons in the heated debate that ensued, while others were dismissed as pandering to Pokémon's ego. Fortunately, the mods were there to make sure that the discussion remained civil and respectful to the people that mattered. After all this drama, some might have assumed that Joey's bloodlust for destroying the UU tier would have been slaked, but he was not quite done yet. The next month, he continued his personal vendetta against the UU tier by embarking on a mission to deprive the tier of one of his staple Pokemon, Yamaswine, by raising its usage in the OU tier to the point where it, too, would be forced to rise up and leave the UU tier. After these episodes, those in charge at Smogon took it upon themselves to do a bit of damage control. They changed the way tier rises and falls occurred in an effort to prevent similar attempts in the future. Additionally, they seem to have made an attempt to appease Joey, who, not long after, coincidentally, was added as a member of the UU Council. The last of the top series we did was Mamoswine to the top, but we also did Amapon to the top, and Amapon to the top was amazing because it was... It was really when it was. I think it was one of the greatest community like come togethers ever. I really do. Where we got this Pokemon that was about to fall to the PU tier. We used it so much in UU that it rose up to like UU and it got like it was like third, fourth, fifth, sixth in usage in UU. And there was a lot of hate behind that. And you know what actually happened after that? I actually became a UU uh, council member after that. So it's like, okay. But while no direct correlation can be proven between these two events. The timing appears suspicious at best. While these controversies were a distraction, they nevertheless failed to detract from Joey's champion status. However, all of this was about to change. Later that same year, in August 2018, Joey would fail to qualify for the Smoke On Official Ladder Tournament, or OLT. He would blame this on the move Magma Storm, which is a move used by Heatran, who was central to the metagame at the time. While this move is quite powerful and useful, 
It has a poor accuracy, leaving many games up to luck. Yo, what's up, guys? I uh, I'll be taking some challenges. Been a minute, but I'll be taking some challenges on Pokemon Showdown under the name Aim. So feel free to come through. Just on the main server. Uh, honestly, today has not been the best day for me when it comes for laddering and tournaments. I uh, I decided to go back to using the move Magma Storm on Heatran, and <laughs> let's just say the other day in OLT I was I think 44 and four or 39 and four, right? 1800. Uh, Today, I'm less than that, and I got like 19 losses, and I'm going to tell you right now, 10 of those are from Magma Storm. Honestly, guys, Magma Storm is the worst move in the game. I don't care. Focus Blast, listen, if I miss it versus Tyranitar, I miss it versus Heat Ramp. If I miss it versus Heat Ramp with Mega Alakazam, it doesn't even matter because I have Flash Fire, I'll leave any hit unless it's Steel EMZ, you know, Course 2 Crash, right? If I miss it versus Tyranitar, whatever. It was my choice to use that 70% accurate move. That's the one mod that I gotta hit it versus, and it's gonna pursue trap me. And if I hit it, then it's dead, right? Magma Storm, you gotta use Heat Ran to trap Toxapex so that way you can open up a door for Gren, so that way you can actually beat. I've had Scizors beat me 1v1 because they've dodged Magma Storm, but it's so essential too. Because using Heat Rain as a trapper to open up doors for Gren, for for Kartana, for you know even like weakening opposing Zygarde for your own potential you know Kogo's HP Ice, it's just ah, it's so annoying, man. I swear, honestly, Magma Storm is the worst move in the game. It doesn't matter. I don't care about Focus Blast. I don't care about switching in on Scalds and being burnt. I don't care about missing 95% accurate moves. Missing Magma Storm is the worst. I've literally been 1v1 today by Leech Seed Protect Ferrothorn. And keep in mind, I didn't go for Magma Storms whenever they protected. Only the first time, then they show Protect. I kept going for Earth Powers after. The dude was able to Leech Seed Protect and get three layers of Spike versus my Heat Rain. This was the only Pokemon on my team with a fire type attack. And it was able to dodge everything. He didn't even have to stay in. The guy had a water type. He had a water type. I don't know. If Granted, it was Greninja, and like Greninja was like at 50, so I would have died of Magma Storm plus the, the damage anyway, but it's... It has been a frustrating game, a day. I was on tilt ever since my RU opened, too. I did not play those well. I really didn't. Yesterday was a great day for tournaments. I I, I laddered really, really well, and I I, I won my, my UU and my, um, my Ubers open. Great. It was great yesterday, right? But then today, just no. No, it just... <laughs> this is one of those days. While dropping out of one tournament at face value might not seem like a lot, Joy went on to nearly disappear from the competitive slowdown scene for almost four years after, besides a brief run in SBL for one year. Joey's content would continue on until this present day, covering Pokemon games as they were released, informing his viewers on adequate movesets to run a competitive, and showcasing various Pokemon in battles. Joey also continued to collaborate with his friends, but this would eventually be the nail in the coffin for his YouTube career. In early 2022, Joey would upload a video entitled Hostility the Movie, Garchomp Uncut Gems, with his friends Blunder and CTC. During this video, Joey would do the following. Heatwave. He probably has Toxic over Heatwave. There's no way they have super power, right? I think knock into ice shards. No, they don't have super power. He might be heat wave, toxic, defog, uh, knockoff. That's the set I run. Bro, I'm knocking. Or U-turn. I'm knocking. He might be U-turn because Scizor has knockoff. That thing took nothing, bro. Oh, wow. Oh, my Why God. Didn't you Why didn't you Axel? Because if I, if I missed, I lose anyway, right? What do you mean? You had two chances. If I miss, I lose anyway. What if I miss both? Wait, what? This guy's like max defense Tornadus, though. Whatever, just don't get paired here. Or don't get confused here. Yeah, if Joe loses the I'll be so sad. Oh my god, bro. Oh my god. The ice move versus the flying type? What because, dude, yeah. if it was standard. It really makes sense. That's that's crazy. Really make sense. <laughs> this is the fattest joke of that's all time. That's crazy. That's crazy, bro. I really got luck. This is the fattest joke of all time. Dude, there's so many ways triple axe can go the game. I ain't gonna hold you. I ain't gonna hold you. That's wild, bro. That's wild, bro. That's wild, bro. I ain't gonna hold you. Dude, it wasn't even the fattest choke, bro. If, if, what if, look, there's so many things that could go wrong with triple axle. I could miss, yeah, I could get uh, one hit. they did go wrong. Two. That was the only other way I could lose. Yo, there's no way. My guy was max defense tornadoes. 
Over the following months, Joey would continue to choke in various ways. Oh my god, SD I on the like hip rope I feel like it's a rap. I don't think you SD, SD again? again? SD wait, again, SD wait, wait, again. Wait, wait. Yeah, because you don't kill anyway. Oh, oh, he's fucked, he's fucked. Do I SD again? Just plus six kills? Uh, I think you, I think you want to... If plus six KO. kills, SD again is the play 100%. Plus, dude, plus six no, no, no. kills every in the game. It's very clear. If, if, as, if plus six kills, that's 76%. Bro, what's and that's his offensive, though? Because did he take... Did he take I feel like he's not offensive. And even well, if he's offensive, the best thing he can go for is like an EQ, which is fine. And if he's offensive, he's not helmet, so... I still see how much Buzz will take. I still so think SD is the best play if if he dies at plus six. Um, it depends on the set. Nah, it does seventy to eighty-two to standard defensive. Well, one. he'll be at seventy-six. But if I have to take two, well, I think if offensive and because well, if, if you jab, if you jab twice, remember you're taking seventeen off helmet twice. Well, I was thinking I can jab plus poison plus earthquake potentially. Can I? Because like, yeah, I feel like plus, plus two. Bro, jab if it's defensive, into the helmet doesn't matter because he can definitely not earthquake. Killing. Oh no, you're plus three. Sorry. Oh yeah, so I'm, I'm plus four. I'm plus four. Oh, you're so plus four. Yeah, yeah, poison think... jab is forty-eight to fifty-seven, depending on the EV spread, and then, then uh, earthquake is playing twenty-three. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I would jab an EQ. Honestly, if he's if banded, kills, yeah. We'll oh yeah, jab oh, and EQ. Poison, kills. solid, sure. solid, solid. Oh. Are you kidding me? Are you fucking kidding me? Stop right now, Skull. Stop! 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 Right now, you are not playing this game with me anymore. There's dude. no way this I've just happened. There's no way. For too many years, no. I'm clicking this earthquake with confidence. No. You suck. We won the game. How is that even possible? Why the fuck did he go hippo just to go in to Buzzwell after? I take Sandstorm. Like, what, like, what happened, bro? What is he thinking? Like, what the fuck, dude? Oh my Whatever, god. Just hacks with Landris. Dodge Steam Eruption, Dodge Leaf Blade, Dodge them all. Oh, wait, we could go Landris on the potential Choke Sludge. Yeah. I guess. Choke Sludge. Uh, they, crit, they crit me as well. And the Why did he crit? Oh no. Ah, oh, they were. They sludged again. I lost. This is so stupid, bro. By this point, it is clear that Joey is not the champion he once was. Despite his eventual return to tournaments, the improvement in quality of his thumbnails, and gaining a coveted G Fuel Shaker, it seems that it will all be downhill from here. This video didn't even cover more minor scandals, such as this one. I'm gonna need you to stop telling me my team is weak to cure him, okay? At the end of the day, this journey just reminds us that once you reach the top, the only way left to go is down.